So here I am with the lovely Shannon Courtney. There she is. Okay, so um, we tried this earlier on today and I completely fluffed at my first attempt. And we had a 30-minute chat. It was lovely to catch up with you. But we're going to try it again. Um, Just you... make sure this time it's recording, please. <laughs> it, is re it is recording. I can see it's recording now. Um, listen, first of all, how are you? And, and what's it like in isolation? I'm bored stiff. Um, I, I live on my own, so I'm isolating alone, which is very testing, but... I'd rather be on my own than living with someone I didn't want to be with, so I guess that's not a bad thing, really. And I see a lot of people complaining about being stuck in isolation with young kids, so again, I'm quite lucky I'm not stuck with kids, neither. But, but you're in isolation, you're so used to going to the gym, you're so used to training six days out of seven. Yeah. How is that affecting you at the moment? Uh, I'm used to a routine, a regimented routine of every single day, get up, eat breakfast, go to the gym, train in the morning for three, four hours, come home, eat lunch and back to the gym, train for a few more hours, then come home, dinner, bed. And that's my regiment. And then, so now I haven't got that regiment to follow. It's, um, I don't know, I'm, I feel a little bit lost, to be honest. It's horrible. I don't really know what to do with myself. And it's the first time in years that I've been able to actually eat and drink what I want and all the restaurants and bars are shut. So <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Um, typically for all boxers at the moment, um, you, you presumably you had fights scheduled. So uh, two. It, yeah, so when were they due to take place then? I was meant to fight on April 24th in Doncaster and I was meant to fight again four weeks after that on the Derek Laura Usyk Bill on the 23rd of May. So how does that affect you now then? Do you, I mean, obviously you'd, you'd already started camp, presumably. Yeah, I was, camp was going really well. I was already 32 rounds and just of sparring into camp. Um, you know, everything was going perfect, felt really good. And we, because we knew we had two back-to-back -back camps starting, you know, I, I'd invested into like a nutritionist, the right strength, you know, everything, you know, you, you, you invest quite a bit into it. We had plans for what we were going to do for the rest of the year, and then it's just completely stopped it all, put it all to a halt. And as someone who found boxing a couple of years ago and had an extraordinary beginning to your professional career, five fights last year, yep. five wins, um, do you feel like you've come to a shuddering halt? I feel, like I said earlier, I feel lost. I don't know what to do with myself. The momentum, especially last year, five fights in nine months, you know, all big shows, some pay-per-view. Last year was such a quick year. And we, we planned again. Eddie was having me do a really quick, busy year this year, trying to gain as much experience as we possibly could. And to go from, like, the biggest high you can imagine to, like, the busiest year to this... It's strange. It's really strange. I feel like I've... It's not just me, that's everyone. You know, we've all lost momentum. The entire... Everyone in boxing is just like, what do we do with ourselves? But obviously, everyone in the world. It's not... But This is a lot bigger than boxing, do you know what I mean? But for me, I just feel a, bit, a little bit lost, to be honest. Has the, has COVID-19 had an impact on you locally at all? Have you Are you very aware of it? Are you... You know, you're, you're near Watford. Um when you've had to go out, are you seeing things? Is there, you know, has it affected anyone that you know? Yes, affected. The, I think the biggest hit, like, the, it, I realised it was last week, uh, two people I know died on the same day, which oh. was a shit day. And then since then, I've known three more people to die. Um, and it's just, it's horrible. People, I don't think until it directly affects someone, people aren't going to listen. People are still going out and about. You know what I mean? Everyone, all of a sudden, is Mo Farah. Everyone's running. And they've never run before. And you think, okay, fair enough. I was exercised. But if you don't need to go out, don't go out. You know, people are fucking dying for crying out loud. Like, this is so serious. And the longer we go on, ignoring everything, and people that aren't key workers are still going to work, the longer this is going to go on for. 
stay at home, stay safe. You're not stuck at home, you're safe at home. Let's just get this over and done with so we can go back to being normal people, living normal lives. I can go back to punch people in the face. Like, that's all I want to do. <laughs> Let me take you back to before you took up boxing. Um, obviously, uh, you, you know, you fight at 52, 53 kilos now as a boxer, a professional yeah. boxer. Um, tell me about how you got into it and what, what you how you got into it and why you got into it? Just literally by chance. I, d I had no intentions of fighting. Just went to boxer size classes to lose weight. And that was all I went for. And I only went because my friend managed to persuade me to go. Wound up that I had a little bit of a natural talent. I could punch quite hard. Um, but I was, yeah, like, like everyone knows. The story's been told, 100 heavy smoker, heavy drinker, etc. And then took it seriously and ended up going to Finchley and that was it. Walked out of the gym, threw my fags in the bin and just fell in love with boxing and I've never looked back since. It's changed my life dramatically and it's, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with me. Also overweight as well. What did you weigh at the time? 85 kilos. That's incredible. Oh, like, I was a big girl. So Very big girl. Wow, yeah. I mean, you must have been literally like a Teletubby. I mean, you're diminutive. I was. I was, I was chunky but funky. <laughs> can, when you look back at photos of yourself then, can you not believe it? I feel sick when I look back at photos of myself. I can't believe that I allowed myself to get into that position. Not just physically, but mentally, because I was so, so unhappy, so depressed. I, I hated what I looked like, but I was so... I was always the loudest in the room because I was trying to overcompensate for my unhappiness and trying to make out that I was fine and trying to com come across confidence. So I was always drunk because I was putting on these, these, this fake person, these, this bravado, and it wasn't me. Is it true that you were even drunk when you started going to your boxer size classes and you'd have a cigarette outside? Yeah, yeah it's true. I um, made out one session I was going for a wee and I didn't, I went outside, I was sick and had a fag. It's unbelievable. Can you can you believe the changes in yourself in just a few years? Yeah, because I, I count my blessings every day. I feel so fortunate and I feel like I was, even like, take away the, the weight, the drink, the smoking. If I always I didn't know what I wanted to be and I was always like, what am I doing with my life? I'm letting my family down, like, I have no purpose. The minute I walked into Finchley, forget the boxer size classes before the actual Finchley ABC, and I smelt the like the old fashioned gyms and I felt the aura and like show where I felt like this is where I deserve to be, this is what I'm gonna do, this is why I'm here, this is my purpose now. And I felt like that every single day since. Did you know that you were kind of athletic growing up then? I was always really sporty, so I was good at football, uh, played at really high level football. I was a dancer, and then when I got to like 13, 14, 15 years old, and you start going to house parties, start smoking, boys, cigarettes, drink, you know, I just stopped doing all sorts of sports altogether. And then I guess my only sport after that was raving, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, do you, now having gone through that, you're 25, aren't you now? Yeah. Right. Am I 25 or 26? Well, 25 I we'll go with. We'll go with 25. It, this period is having that kind of effect on us. <laughs> yeah. Um, that when, when you look at your own history now, are you aware that kind of millions of teenage girls go through that now? And that, 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 that having that purpose, having that, that time, that period where you do discover you're a young adult, that that they can look to you now and say, wow, look what look what she did. Can I follow in those footsteps? Yeah, I think it's always weird when people say that I'm some of someone to look up to because I don't see myself in that way, but I, I go to shows or when I'm fighting or just even in the street and I get so many people, young girls stop me saying, oh, because of you I've gone to a gym or you've changed my life, your story. Right. And I just think, wow, like that's... 
it feels just as good as winning a fight, to be honest, because it's such a nice feeling. Because I don't actually believe, and I'm not saying I'm a role model, but I don't genuinely believe there's many good role models out there today in today's society. Young girls are so obsessed with, you know, Instagram and these fake Instagram models and filters and the Kardashians and they're not the best of role models and girls are days they have no confidence because of social media I guess you could say and it does affect them mentally so for them to see someone that's focused on the positive things in life not you know lip fillers or boob jobs or bum fillers like these girls have nowadays it's not I think it's, it's, a, it's a positive thing be po- positive Body positive, but natural as well is a good thing. Have you, you've only had five fights. You've only been out there in the public for a year, year and a bit now. Um, It must be rewarding that, I mean, I know myself because I've had dealings with you publicly with things, how popular, how much people are enjoying you and your story. Does that mean a lot to you as well? Yeah, it does, because it seems to connect with a lot of people as well, because you get listen I I didn't go to the Olympics I haven't got this humongous amateur background I didn't start boxing when I was seven like most of these people did I was I was 21 when I started I didn't have my first fight so I was 22 so when you bump into fans and stuff they can relate to you because they just they was in a pub or they they still like to go and have a drink but they just go to the gym every now and then they they didn't start boxing when they were eight years old and have all this this humongous background so they can probably relate to me a little bit easier because I'm still fairly new to the game. And you've got great charisma as well, I've got to say that, and it's it's always great dealing I with you. I do try, I do try. Well, I don't think you have to try, though, as well. <laughs> I'm joking, it's all natural, I am who I am. <laughs> I know, I know that, and that's what I love about you, and I think that's what the fans love about you. I mean, I can remember the very first few interviews that myself and David Alorca did with you for William Hill at events, and... You're very confident and very natural with it all, and you're not hiding anything. Do you know what I mean? You're not. You're just you. You know. I think. I think that's easy because then you never have to be a false person. You never have to put any form. You never have to act. If you're if you're yourself from day one, then it's going to be very easy for you because you just have to be you. When you have to start, you get boxes nowadays that put on an act for the cameras and. They might get more attention because of it, but then what tiring job that when you're out in public, you've got to put on a mask and you've got to be two different people. Um, I am who I am. Like it, I love it. Did you, did you get in fights when you were younger and you weren't able to back down and discover that, that nasty, spiteful side of yourself? Um, Listen, I'm half Irish, so I've got that feistiness in me anyway. But I wasn't that, and I was never really out fighting. No, but I've I've always been feisty. No, because you because your your fighting style is very very aggressive. Yeah, you terrorise, don't you? That's the way you. <laughs> you know. That's the way. I've never really had an amateur style. Not neither. I've always boxed. I've always been like a professional. As in, I stalk my prey I don't mind getting hit to land three more and that's obviously not a good thing but that's the way I am and yeah I think that's probably what when even when I was an amateur I was quite popular to watch because I'm not your conventional nice upright boxer who would keep you long I'm a little bit of a tear away the braids go in the cornrows go in and the character yeah. changes doesn't it you know listen the makeup comes off the nails stay on though but the cormorant goes in and, yeah, the animal comes out. Um, on the boxing front, obviously everything's delayed now. What does it feel like that you may potentially have to wait until, let's say, August, September to box and we're only at the beginning of April? Uh, hell. I, I literally... I think I'll lose my mind, to be honest. I'm tr- I'm still training every day because I'm trying to keep myself mentally and physically in shape. Because, listen, it's been well documented before. I'm not embarrassed to admit it. I do struggle with anxiety very badly. And the only thing that keeps me sane is my training. Um, that's why even in between camps, I don't have a break because 
not just myself, my team knows as well that I, I struggle mentally sometimes. So they always say, if you want to tick over, you want to come in the gym, it's fine. Da, da, da. So I'm going to keep training, but the thought of not fighting until September, oh my God, it's just, I don't, I don't want to think about it, to be honest. At this rate, I'd fight in Eddie's back garden if I could. <laughs> So, um, will you try and get out three times this year still? Yes, I'll try and get out seven if I could. Mm. Uh, we had a very busy year planned. Obviously, that's not happening now. Well, it's not going to be as busy as we planned, but I think right now, let's just count our blessings that our families are healthy or that everyone else around us, God touch wood, is, is healthy. And then once it's all over with, then get straight back to business and uh, start getting them wins under the belt and hopefully start looking at titles as well. Um, I know you love your music. How are you getting through your workout routines and music at home on your own at the moment? Because I play a lot of music at home. Yeah. You can see the Ramones and Lou Reed behind yeah. me. Um, I've got Steven Tyler over there. Ozzy Osbourne's on the wall just out there in the hallway. Um, what are you listening to to get you through at the moment? Uh, at the moment, positive vibes only. So my favourite music, which is Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Elvis Presley. Nice, the classics. Yeah, I'm, I'm an old school. I'm an old heart. I am. Have you trained? There's, there's some music nowadays that I don't mind, but they don't make them like they used to, do they? They don't make them like they used to. Exactly. You're an old school. You're a young woman, but with an old school heart. By the same. You know what it is? I grew up in a pub since the age of four years old. I lived yeah. in a pub until I was four till I was 17, so I always grew up around really old music and mm. a really wide variety of tastes. So if you look at my my playlist, it'll be it'll go from Frank Sinatra to Tupac to Paul Weller to the Rolling Stones to Roger Stewart. I've got a really varied taste. Nice, very eclectic. Very, yes. very eclectic. Um, have you trained yet today? Today is actually the first day in about maybe 18, 18, maybe 20 days that I've had off because I've, I've trained every day, twice a day for that long, and now my body's starting to hurt. Because I went straight from a full camp to being told you're not fighting, and I kept training because I thought I'm not going to... I thought this would be over quicker than it was, and obviously the last two weeks I've realised this is going to be a long period. So I did, because my body started hurting yesterday, I thought, you know, I'm actually going to have a day off. But I've made today a day that I've been busy. I've been like, I went to do my food shop earlier. I'll go for a long walk later, but not, I'm going to have like an active rest because my, my body is hurting, but I need to stay busy with my mind. Mask and gloves or not? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. I had gloves and a mask on. I don't know how much of a difference it made, but I look like a knob as well, to be honest. But <laughs> if it keeps me protected, so be it. <laughs> Given it's your non-workout day, foods are you allowed cheap foods today or not i think everyone's eating what they want when they want at the moment i'm trying to stay healthy because i feel like your immune system needs that kind of food right now so like i had broccoli with chili garlic uh, and spinach for breakfast wow but to tonight i will inhale some biscuits so i'm not going to deny that <laughs> well listen i'm going to leave you to your um, biscuits and Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, and Elvis yeah. Presley. It's great to see you, Shannon. You too. Um, um, and stay well, and let's catch up again in, in a week or so's time and, and see how we're doing. Perfect. Take care. Lovely to speak right, to you. Take care. Stay safe. Bye.